Ona is energetic. Ona is not afraid to take risk. More and more every year, I think the number one thing that people say about the conference is not this quantifiable thing that you can describe. It's really the energy in the hallways and uh, the excitement that people have about the industry. I always say at an ONA conference, things aren't dead. Nothing is dying. Journalism isn't dead. Things are alive. So to have even a small role in kind of helping shape that is, is, is truly an honor, and I'm really excited about that. For me, I think what um, is exciting, and, and this predates me, but just because I've talked to um, many of our founders and people who've been here for since the start of the organization, you know, I just want to know what it was like um, when they were found, find, founding this organization, um, you know, and they tell you that it was at most a hundred people for the first one, um, and then for years on it was a couple hundred people. So now when I look and I see over 2,000 people in the audience, um, you know, even though I wasn't there in the beginning, I'm still at awe of just kind of what has happened and the people that have made this uh, this community just grows so much and the fact that we're still growing, um, I think that's what gets me excited and that's what I thought about when uh, I was on stage today. Yeah, seeing how far ONA has come since 1999 is just really amazing to me. I, I, whenever I get a chance, I like to talk to the founders and the people that have been around the organization um, for many, many years. And when I hear the stories of what they would say that the old conferences would be on campuses or in these small rooms and it would have a couple of hundred people, and I look out on the audience now or I walk the hallways now and see over 2,000 people, it really does just amaze me. It makes me proud um, to be a part of this and have any small role in this is really um, amazing to me. And, and um, you know, one of the things that our, our founder, Rich Skarkowski, would say is um, his stories around how ONA was founded was there was a gentleman, I believe, and I don't know his name, but um, at the time, another organization didn't think people from MSNBC.com were journalists. So that sort of displacement and that feeling of not knowing um, you know, knowing that you were doing journalistic work but not being fully recognized is really sort of how we were founded. And then when you look at it now, digital is journalism. So looking back then and today really makes it amazing. So looking at the next couple of years, um, and this also goes back to kind of the pitch that I made to, uh, to, to get the job as well too. And this is in, in alignment to what uh, the team and the board think as well too. But one of the first things is around really truly becoming a global organization. While the world is getting bigger in numbers, um, in terms of how people are getting connected, that's a much smaller way to be connected now. So I think it's important as digital journalists around the world are understanding how to do different things and uh, trying to solve different problems. You really need that worldwide support. So I would love to see, you know, at a future ONA conference that this really becomes a global conference where you can learn what people in Europe are doing or Africa or Australia and we can pull together to help solve problems. Um, another thing I think that will be a, a big pillar in terms of us moving forward is around um, Right now, people have a lot of respect and they have a good time at our annual conference. And I, and I want to move us to what we're calling a college to C-suite experience. And that is no matter what area you are in your career, whether you're a student, whether you're um, an early career professional, whether you're an executive, um, ONA should have resources for you. Um, you should be able to go to ONA. You have a problem at work. The ONA website or contacting someone, an ONA member, should be one of the first things that you look to do. So really building out the portfolio of how can we provide resources for everyone, no matter what section of their career that they're in. Another area that I would love for ONA to focus on is really around Digital is um, much more broad than when we were founded, and now there's so many disciplines within digital, whether that's audience engagement, uh, whether that's immersive technology, whether that's developers, technologists, um, academics, really be building sort of a mini subset of communities that feed into the larger community of ONA. Um, and each one of those communities have different and distinct needs. So have, again, once again, having ONA provide those needs and those resources for all those individual communities. Diversity is real important, and I think um, one of the things I'm really proud about about the organization, um, if you had came to the conference, I think even five years ago, um, you know, I think the organization was really criticized about diversity in terms of how diverse this uh, attendance was. And what many organizations do is they either take that as offensive or they take that and just ignore it and say that this is just a couple of people and it doesn't matter. Um, so one of the things that I'm extremely proud about about the organization is that they really took that to heart and they embraced um, those criticisms and they asked, they invited people in to say, how can we make this better? And so when I look back to what the conference was even five, six years ago and I look back today, um, it's a much, much diverse audience when you, term, when you talk about people of color here. And then when you talk about the discipline of what people are doing, um, I just think the jobs that people are doing are changing and evolving. So now, um, when even saying the word digital journalist 
What does that mean today? It means so many different things depending on where you are, what part of the world you're in, what organization you work for. So I think just the natural evolution of careers has made um, the disciplines that we see here much more diverse. When you talk about diversity, and, and no matter what aspect you talk about diversity and inclusion, I think it's one of those things, um, I don't think you can ever say you're done. It's one of those things that's always sort of the, a North Star, and you have to be okay with it being a North Star, because as soon as you say it's done, that's when you have an issue, and you're not reaching out to new people, um, which will stop all the progress that you made. So it's one of those things that it's a constant sort of, um, it's not easy, it's hard, but it's one of those things where you have to constantly invite new people into your community. And you know, one of our successes, I think, was we don't come into any community and say, um, this is how we do things, you know, we want you to be a part of us. We just listen. And we see what are we already doing that connects with that community, what can we change, and what are things that we can do in the middle. So most of that is really driven by um, what we hear from different communities and making it more inclusive. Not necessarily sort of a top-down approach of just telling them, hey, this is how we do things and you're welcome to join us. Yeah, last year's keynote um, about harassment, even for me personally, that was just, it's, it was so eye-opening. Um, because when you talk about news environments and harassment, that managers aren't um, understanding or respecting um, what people feel is harassment. So people are defining what they think is harassment, not what someone feels it is. And so from the person that is getting harassed, um, you know, that's hurtful. Um, you know, that is not something that anyone should have to deal with in the workforce. And I think um, it's, it's a mix of how can we better educate People around that, again, hearing those stories last year on that, on that panel um, you know, was just a powerful thing uh, for me personally to witness. I know um, the audience. So I think as far as ONA, ONA's role in that, I think we have a platform to really um, bring those stories to life um, and, and help people understand what they may think as harassment or offensive. Um, they have to get out of their bubble and they have to understand that other people um, may view things that are offensive to them and you have to respect that. I would say the past year, past two years, one of the things that we've gotten feedback on, um, this specifically came, to, came from a group of broadcast journalists, and they said, hey, we think this conference is great. We got a lot of, out of it, but we didn't see a lot for us here. Um, and we didn't just take that as a one-off criticism. So meeting with the team, and then Trevor Noblick, who does our programming, he's amazing. Um, you know, as the, each year has evolved, we try to add more elements to that to say, um, even though digital is all inclusive, um, there is a specific piece to broadcast that, pe that people are saying they have unique needs to and they would like for, to see that more at the conference. So we listen, that's a, been an added part of the program. Um, members started their own ONA local broadcast sort of community. They started a Facebook group. They're having a breakfast on Saturday. There's more um, sessions on it than we've had before. So that's just a perfect example of, again, if, if an organization is not flexible and they don't listen, that may sound just like one gripe from a couple of people, right? But it's not really that. It's really, um, it could be something bigger um, you have to pay attention. So I think when you talk about moving forward, it's one of those things you can't really plan, but you just have to know um, when you hear this sort of feedback, um, what, what feedback to take and, and become flexible with and sort of adjust and be open to doing new things um, to do. And I think that's how you grow. So, um, ONA's impact on me personally, I think it's sort of twofold. So for me as a person, um, professionally, this is where I've had my most growth. I think, uh, you know, Jane has been a wonderful mentor. A lot of times um, when you talk about mentors and influential people in your life, um, what you hear a lot of times is that those people saw something in you that didn't, you didn't see in yourself at that time. Um, so Jane's been one of those people for me. So just from a, a personal, professional level, um, ONA has been a part of that growth, so that's, that's been extremely important um, to me in, in, in how I got to this role now. From an industry perspective, um, when I see what's happening um, you know, in our country and the dialogue and the conversations around that, um, knowing that our members are um, the people that are making the difference in that or telling these stories that um, may not have been to told before, particularly in a digital space, I think one of the great things about the, the growth of digital is that voices you would have never heard from before are now front and center and then sometimes those unheard voices become um, national stories because of what's happening with digital journalism. So from a, a, a industry standpoint, um, knowing that I'm a part of an organization where our community 
is um, the catalyst in driving that. Um, you know, that's just uh, you know priceless to, to to be a part of that. So usually I get this a lot. Uh, I've I've recruited many many people to, to come to ONA, but um, one when I, no one has ever heard of ONA, I always say you have to come to the conference just once. Um, and usually my selling point is if I get, get you to the conference, I don't have to say anything else. You're coming to me asking how can you be involved um, later. But any time that I can connect, I think o, um, ONA is one of those places where um, it, it really is best to be around other people and kind of see how the community is. It's, it's hard to describe in words, um, but it's one of those things is if I were to bring someone to an ONA local group or to the conference, um, they're hooked because they just see how um, warm everyone is, how embracing everyone is. You know, I don't know if this is just a digital thing or not, but digital people are just usually fun. <laughs> they are just fun, and so and they have a fun time together. So anyone um, who sort of has that mentality, uh, when you put them in the room, you really don't have to do anything else. So as far as the student newsroom, the student newsroom holds a near and dear place in my heart. Um, my career has been a career of sort of the journalism organization alphabet soup with between NABJ and RTDNA. However, the one consistent thing that all organizations did besides an annual conference was a student newsroom or a student project. Now, if I look back even before my time at ONA, um, when I look at the students when I was first starting 10 years ago, um, those students now are breaking major news and headlines. Um, Wesley Lowry, who's at the Washington Post, he was a former student projects person in the National Association of Black Journalists. So now when I look back to see these people who were babies at the time become sort of these national figures in journalism, it just kind of makes my heart melt. And then when I look at the student newsroom here, um, even within the five years that I've been here, I was just talking to someone today, um, she's gotten a job out in Chicago, and you really see sort of um, just the, their growth, their personal growth is kind of amazing to see, and, and their energy and excitement. I, and I really think that is what um, this conference is about, is what ONA is about, when you see kind of the energy that everyone's bringing, and um, they're growing up, and, and not, to, not to put everyone in one category, but each subsequent generation is growing up with a different sort of technology than the one before. So they're bringing new things to the newsroom. I think um, today I just saw one of the messages in the, um, in the student newsroom that one of the students is going to build an app so that you could find which of your Twitter followers are here at the conference. This can only happen in an ONA student newsroom, um, and that's going to help get that student a job someday. So um, I just think the student newsroom is just so important, and it really is kind of the heart of what we do.